I remember a time whenever a Transformers movie came out, the shelves would be packed with Transformers toys and you'd be able to pick whatever character you wanted. Unfortunately for Transformers 1, this is not really the case. We've got loads of Optimus Primes and Bumblebees, but Elita and Megatron or D16, there's not too many choices for us to choose from. So this Elita one is one of the three Elitas we could choose from so far. So this is the Cogless Elita from Yolo Park. Yolo Park also has a larger cogged version of Elita 1. There's that sort of battle game Elita 1 as well. Blockies is due to come out with a classic slime Elita 1. She's got metallic paint and is due to be bigger than the classic blocky sizes. So I don't know if she really would scale with the Studio Series or not. But this is the one I chose. This is the Cogless Yolo Park and she is fantastic. I've waited so long for the shipping. Absolutely insane that we weren't able to get the Nelita 1 figure for the movie. Let's get the size comparisons out of the way so far. I did pick up all four Cogless ones and they're gonna have their own videos of sorts. But the reason I picked this Nelita 1 over the Cogged one is for her to scale with the Studio Series Optimus Prime. <laughs> and doesn't that look good? Now the Cogless version of the Lita 1 shares a lot of parts or design cues compared to the Cogged version. So with a tracker blaster um, covering her chest, I don't really mind her being in the Studio Series display. Some basic assembly is needed for the character, but you'd be able to build this character in about 15 minutes or so. Now let's take the tracker blaster off of her hands because this does not actually come with a figure. I'll talk about this later, but let's take a 360 look at the toy. Comparing her to her renders, all the design cues are there. Um, she is very, very faithful to her movie design. Her legs are nicely detailed as well. Everything here, the proportions are spot on. She's got her massively long legs. And for accessory wise, she does come with a few. She does come with identical pairs of hands. She's got one open palm hand and one fisted hand on her now. But then she's also got a fisted hand, a completely sort of relaxed hand, an open hand as well for the other hand, a backpack piece, and then a cog as well. I don't really know why they've included T-Cogs for the cogless versions of um, Elita and Bumblebee because, you know, you could have the cog fit into their chests for Orion Pax and D16 as a little play feature, but that play feature doesn't carry on onto Alita and Bumblebee. Jetpack is so nicely detailed. She does carry a backpack in the film sometimes, so I've chosen for the backpack look to be her main look to add some bulk to the character. I also like the extra silver details. I just think that that breaks the colors up a bit more, but it is actually removable, so let's just take it off. This piece is in there quite tightly actually, so you have to sort of shimmy it out gently. The backpack just attaches to this rectangular hole here, and there's just this rectangular slot for the jetpack. All four characters share the same backpack. Again, nicely, nicely detailed and painted as well. I'll put this backpack piece on just so you can see the stock look. Not too bad looking as well, and while we're here, let's take a look at the back details as well. I love the spine details that they included for Elita 1. Everything here is magnificent, all down to articulation. So speaking of articulation, why don't we take a look at that? So the head is on the ball joint, so you can sort of have a wiggly waggly, up and down, up that much, down that much, full 360. Not too much sideways tilt, but it is enough for her to express some character, I guess. The um, Ball joint here is slightly loose on my copy, but it's not too loose anyways, like, it's okay. The shoulder designs are quite cool, like, it's a ball joint so you get that 360 at the ball joint. The shoulder design sort of blocks the ball joint, so it only goes up that far. But then there's a secret hinge inside the chest that allows you for extra upwards movement, so you get up to there. It's not the best, but it's pretty good actually. There's a rotation at the bicep an over 90 degree bend at the elbow, and then you've got a ball joint at the open palms or fists. You get a rotation at the waist, and then these hip skirt pieces move up like that to allow 
that just came off. Um, these ball joints, um, the leg ones, pop off fairly easily, but it's no problem. You just pop it back on. It allows for outward movement like that, upwards kick, very, very good. And then that's a very nice backwards kick range. There's a very tight swivel inside the thigh. So, you know, you could see that it's rotating like that. And then you've got a very, very nice double bend at the knee. We have some up and down at the toe because of the ball joint. And then we've got some ankle tilt as well. While I love this figure very, very much, in terms of articulation and accessories and sculpt, I'm not really happy about the colours that they've chosen to represent the character. The white parts here should be silver, um, according to the character renders and everything. And the white makes her face fairly hard to capture on camera. Wish that would have been silver. Might go in and paint it up myself. The main colour in the movie is this metallic pink slash purple. Like this violety pink. I think with this beautiful paint that they've chosen for D16, they could have easily done a metallic pink for Elita and elevate the look even more. But what we have now, and for the price, it's brilliant. Speaking of price, this thing is about 14 US dollars and I've used 6O's code. That rounds out to be just over 10 pounds. Um, that's at the price of a cog changer or the one step changers. And for that, if you want to choose between a cog changer or a Yolo Park figure, I'd highly recommend you get the Yolo Park figure. Now let's quickly talk about the Tracker Blaster. This Tracker Blaster comes from the Blockies set. I took this off of Optimus Prime. And as you can see, I've shaved down a bit of the handle in order for it to fit into Yolo Park Elita's hand. I have another Death Tracker that holds another Tracker Blaster and that's unmodified, so not all is lost. This can always be interchanged between characters, but with the now modified Tracker Blaster, we're able to fit this into Elita's hand as seen in the opening of the review. Let's switch her back to my preferred look, which is the backpack look. And with the blaster and the jetpack, I think that this figure looks absolutely fantastic and dynamic. And with the articulation added into the figure, we're able to pull off some really nice poses. So as mentioned before, I did pick up the other Cogless Yolo Park figures so stay tuned for those videos. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and goodbye.